This man is at the centre of attention at the June EU summit in Brussels. Brian Cowan is the Irish Prime Minister, and Ireland last week voted against a treaty that would change the way the EU works. Cowan now wants more time to reflect on the outcome. The three months to October are not enough. He's talking about the end of the year. That it is necessary for Ireland to have time now to analyse last week's vote and explore options. After the dinner Thursday night, the Irish Prime Minister presented his colleagues with a list of reasons why the Irish have voted no. It's not because the Lisbon Treaty is too difficult to understand, but because of real anxiety about the EU's future direction. These concerns are also shared by the Czech Republic, which considers stopping the ratification process in the wake of the Irish no. Let's take a good look at the official Irish arguments for voting no against the Lisbon Treaty. First, there's concern about Europe's position in world trade talks, the suggestions of tax harmonization in Europe, the loss of a potential Irish commissioner, the change in Ireland's voting strength, the lack of democratic accountability of the European Council, possible court rulings on abortion and euthanasia, poor workers' rights and defence policy. These are real arguments of real people, which makes it difficult to dismiss the Irish vote as an outright anti-European one. I fully agree with his view that the vote was not against Europe. I made clear to the Taoiseach that the Commission will fully endorse his request that Ireland will be given time to decide how to react and to come forward with proposals on the next steps. So what are the alternatives? Changing the treaty is out of the question. 19 countries have already ratified it. Germany, the Netherlands and the Czech Republic are among those who still have to do so. The idea of a two-speed Europe also is discussed. Luxembourg's Prime Minister Jean-Claude Juncker has expressed his support for this. It would mean that those who ratify the treaty will move ahead, leaving behind those who have not. It will create a lot of confusion. And then there are also the creative options that Brussels is known for. One of them is to fold the Lisbon Treaty into the accession agreement with Croatia, to join in 2009. But such a deal would be a slap in the face to those who voted no. Well, I think the most uh, important thing is first to follow what the Irish government have asked for, which is to show respect by giving them time to decide their next uh, steps. Secondly, we show respect by being absolutely clear that unless the treaty has the support of 27 countries, it will, come, it will not come into law, it will not have the force of law. Monsieur le Président. France is to take over the rotating EU presidency in July. This means President Nicolas Sarkozy will be in charge of finding a way out of the crisis. Sarkozy said he plans to visit Ireland soon and he hopes to receive a proposal from Ireland in October. The French president is among those who wants to urge the Irish government to organize a second referendum. Without the Lisbon Treaty, he says, no further countries can be allowed to join the Union. Pour que l'élargissement de l'Europe se poursuive, il faut le traité de Lisbonne. S'il n'y a pas de traité de Lisbonne, on revient au traité de Nice. Et le traité de Nice, c'est une Europe à 27 qui ne peut pas s'élargir sans qu'elle ait modifié ses institutions. All member states are committed to conclude the ratification of the Lisbon Treaty and we have of course the problem with no voting in Ireland. I made it clear that however frustrating for them it is simply too early to know how we are going to move forward from this point. There is no quick fix or easy solution at this stage, and we must not prejudice how this dilemma might be resolved. Listening to the Irish, respecting the outcome of the referendum, taking into account the no. All European politicians have been saying this during the last week. For now, the EU leaders have bought time time they want to use to find a creative way out. Behind the scenes during the French presidency, German Chancellor Angela Merkel will be pulling a lot of the strings. She has made it clear already that she wants the Treaty of Lisbon to enter into force without a pause for reflection. If that is not going to happen, these seals and autographs under the Lisbon Treaty may ultimately prove worthless. It all means there will be a lot of pressure on those who are claiming that the Lisbon Treaty is dead. And it also means that the debate on Europe's future, unfortunately, is far from over. Raymond Franken for EUX TV.